We're going to start with Mayor Akiba, and we're hoping through this wonderful technology that he is going to be with us. Mayor Akiba, welcome to this Canadian Forum, and thank you for your outstanding leadership on the issue of nuclear disarmament. The floor is yours, sir. Okay, thank you very much, President Alexa McDonough, for your kind introduction and for all the wonderful work you have done for all of humanity. And I would also like to thank Mayor Dave Miller of Toronto, Senator Douglas Roach, Dr. Meta Spencer, and all involved in this public forum for making my appearance possible. And Jonathan, it is my great honor to see you again through this time and money-saving technology. I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk to this remarkable audience about what Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Mayors for Peace are doing. Well, I'm sorry, I should have started by saying good evening uh, to all of you. And uh, I didn't do it because um, in Hiroshima, it's a beautiful Saturday morning. Um, as an, an autumn day, we cannot expect uh, a more beautiful days like this. We have a, a fun, you know, bright sunshine, crisp uh, air, and the green mountains uh, surrounding Hiroshima are turning red and yellow well, because it's autumn. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if this good weather has been brought by uh, President Obama. Um, as you may know, he is in Japan right now. And uh, last night, Japan time, he and Prime Minister Hatoyama issued a joint statement. And in that statement, both leaders confirmed uh, their commitment to create a nuclear weapon-free world and emphasized the importance of early conclusion of the START follow-up treaty, the early entry into force of the CTBT, and the immediate commencement of negotiations on and uh, conclusion of the fissile material cut-off treaty, among others. I do welcome such a statement for, well, at least two reasons. One is that President Obama is pursuing to uh, make it a reality that uh, specific measures he has mentioned in his Prague speech by expanding his network of like-minded leaders and nations worldwide. And the second is that Prime Minister Hatoyama has firmly committed Japan further into working with President Obama to create a nuclear weapon-free world. Uh, during the press conference, uh, President Obama also mentioned uh, something uh, which is, in a sense, a repetition of uh, his words uh, earlier. Um, his earlier words were, the memories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are etched in the minds of the world, and I would be honored to have the opportunity to visit those cities at some point during my presidency. Uh, although there is a difference this time in that he stated he does not expect the visit to take place within the immediate, immediate future, I believe uh, his words you know, have been uh, important and uh, well received in Japan. Uh, his visit to Hiroshima and or Nagasaki you know, has been enthusiastically um, well embraced by both the Hibaksha, that's the survivors of the ethnic bombing, and also citizens of uh, these uh, two cities. And um, you know, however, some people are interpreting uh, his words at the pre press con conference last night as a setback, setback because um, you know, he kind of discounted his visit to Hiroshima and Nagasaki by saying that it may not happen within an immediate future. But I do not share that interpretation. Um, what I feel very strongly is that the speed at which President Obama has been implementing his announced policies um, is just amazing, and I believe that the world should appreciate you know, his sincerity in doing so. Uh, for example, I was expecting him to say that he would consider visiting Hiroshima and or Nagasaki at a much later date uh, when some of the hurdles um, to his visit have been cleared. Well, as far as I can see, President Obama is uh, very brave in making such an announcement at all at such an early stage. And that's what uh, we should be looking at. And that is a great um, 
no reason for us to be optimistic. Another point I would like to point out is that the U.S. government announced it will reduce uh, its nuclear warheads by half to 5,000 by 2012. Well, if the United States continues to dismantle nuclear warheads at this rate, it is quite conceivable that all U.S. nuclear weapons would be eliminated, well, by 2015 and you know, certainly by 2020. Well, the actual happening of the world, uh, led by President Obama, the pace of this, these activities is ahead of the timetable Mayors for Peace has outlined in its Hiroshima-Nagasaki Protocol. Now, I'd like to explain a little bit about that, but before uh, that, I need to mention you know, what, uh, I, what Mayors of Peace is all about. You know, however, uh, before doing that, I would like to comment on the strategy President Obama seems to be taking. He's mo moving very cautiously, but at the same time more quickly than most of us had imagined. And um, that is why I express the sentiment that the last ICNND, that's International Commission on uh, Nuclear Non-Proliferation and Disarmament, uh, sponsored by the Australian and Japanese government. Um, well, I expressed the sentiment that this ICNND conference held in Hiroshima in October that uh, their report, final report, of which is supposed to come out either late this year or early next year, may be obsolete when it uh, actually comes out. And I would venture to say that uh, we should pay more attention to the speed at which the world seems to be changing now. Unless we humbly see this reality and adjust to its speed, we may all be obsolete when we finalize our plans of any disarmament effort. The least we can do at this point, it seems to me, is that we stick to the pace outlined in the Hiroshima-Nagasaki Protocol I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, let me say a few things about uh, Mayors for Peace, uh, which has um, announced this uh, protocol last year. The mayor Mayors for Peace, uh, the organization was established in 1982 by Mayor Araki of Hiroshima and Mayor Motoshima of Nagasaki. Its aim was to create a world without nuclear weapons by rallying together cities and citizens around the world. Since the creation of Mayors of Peace, the world situation has deteriorated. We all know that. And we are looking at the real possibility that dozens of nations might acquire nuclear weapons, if not more. In 2003, to respond to this crisis, Mayors for Peace launched an emergency campaign to ban nuclear weapons, which has become better known as the 2020 Vision Campaign. Our goal is the total abolition of nuclear weapons by the year 2020, as I mentioned, and the midterm goal is to conclude a nuclear weapon free, uh, sorry, a nuclear weapons convention by 2015. To generate greater momentum, we introduced the Hiroshima-Nagasaki Protocol in April 2008. I'm sure you all know the valuable role the Kyoto Protocol has played in the field of uh, global warming. I expect the Hiroshima-Nagasaki Protocol to play such a role in the field of nuclear weapons abolition. It is a roadmap guiding us toward a peaceful world free of nuclear weapons by the year 2020. Initially, uh, it proposes that we do the freeze. Uh, if you were active in the 80s, um, uh, the freeze movement was uh, central to all of us, and that freeze is the starting point. And by 2015, the Nuclear Weapons Convention, and by 2020, the total elimination. That's more or less a rough sketch of uh, this uh, protocol schedule. And um, so we hope that this short, concise protocol will play a role at the United Nations, and our, our current um, focus is to get the protocol adopted by the NPT Review Conference next year. We need allies to accomplish this, like-minded nations to submit the protocol to the Review Conference, and more countries uh, to agree you know, with our idea. We are hopeful because we have allies everywhere, actually. 
One of them is the U.S. Conference of Mayors. The United States of Conference of Mayors, USCM, is an association of more than 1,200 American cities, over 30,000 in population. It has played an extremely important role in changing American society over many years, starting in the 30s. It has also been a leading organization of mayors that has championed the cause of a nuclear weapon free world. The USCM has passed five unanimous resolutions supporting the Mayors for Peace 2020 vision campaign. This past June in Providence, Rhode Island, they again unanimously passed a resolution that includes a call for President Obama to lead the start of multilateral negotiations uh, towards the total abolition of nuclear weapons by the year 2020. Uh, given President Obama's speech in Prague just before that US SCM meeting, I believe we can expect significant movement in the U.S. at the grass grassroots level. This makes it even more important for the U.S. and Japan to work together at both the governmental and grassroots levels play a much larger role on the international stage. And now that's happening uh, today. Internationally, the membership of Mayors of Peace in 2003 was only 560. Today, we have 3,241 member cities worldwide. Last year alone, more than 600 new member cities joined nearly two cities each day. The combined population of our member cities is approximately 600 million. We are now working hard to increase our membership to 5,000 cities by the time of the NPT review conference next year. When we succeed, we will represent one billion people worldwide. At this point, we have 74 Canadian member cities. Let me take this opportunity to formally ask you, all of you who are present today, to commit yourselves to doubling this number by May. Please approach your mayor and get your friends to approach their mayors. It is only with your help that we can be successful. And I would also like to ask you, ask um, those of you who are from outside of Canada to do the same thing uh, in each of your countries. Mayors and city governments in general tend to recognize rather easily that the elimination of nuclear we weapons is an urgent necessity. It is at the city level that human beings experience tragedy. From Pompeii to Troy to Ypres to Guernica, Chongqing, Stalingrad, Auschwitz, Hiroshima, and Nagasaki, and you can add more names to this list, the great tragedies of history take the names of their cities. It is at the city level that we usually share our greatest suffering as a community. Therefore, we have always the city's name on big tragedies known worldwide. Let me tell you something about Ypres, uh, Belgium. In 1915, during World War I, German troops first used poison gas in the city. After the gas attack, the city was destroyed by conventional bombs and other weapons. The, the entire city was reduced to ashes. Last year, as you know, we marked the 90th anniversary of the end of World War I. At 11.11 on November 11, 1918, the armistice to end the war was concluded and Ypres held a commemorative ceremony last November. Well, uh, European countries and cities held si similar uh, ceremonies last year. However, the city of Ypres among other cities, uh, as a matter of fact, does not wait a year to, co to conduct its memorial ceremony. Even though 90 years have passed, they console the souls of the victims of World War I every day. This too derives from the determination to use the horrifying experiences of the past to protect the future and create a better future. Like Ypres or Guernica, many cities immediately understand the message of Hiroshima and identify with our history. Responding to the symbols of the nuclear tragedy and seeking to avoid the to total alienation of human life, 
Such cities are determined to work with Hiroshima and Nagasaki to achieve a peaceful future and specifically to eliminate nuclear weapons by 2020. Fortunately, some important statements have prompted the role of citizens and cities, promoted, uh, sorry, the role of cities and cities. One of um, these is Ambassador uh, Yuri Savir. Uh, once a member of the Israeli Diet, Knesset, he led the Israeli delegation that negotiated the Oslo Accords, the peace pact between Israel and Palestine. In his book, Peace First, he cites eight reasons that most peace processes uh, so often fail. One of his eight reasons is that the same people who are leading the war are suddenly expected to become leaders of the peace. Such leaders are charged with negotiating the peace despite serious conflicts of interest. That is, war leaders do not necessarily benefit from peace. He also pointed out that the thinking is confined to overly narrow security doctrine. Well, I recommend that you read the book, but anyway, uh, to, base, to um, uh, make a recommendation based on his analysis, uh, he proposes that it is important to realize the peace now, that we don't need to keep these eight points at it, as it is, and depend our national negotiations on government's representatives or diplomats. But we have to create the participatory diplomacy. That is, diplomacy in which citizens take part in the negotiations. Participatory diplomacy is a vital concept in many fields, but we need your help in the struggle to abolish nuclear weapons. First and foremost, please approach the mayor in your city or any city you have a connection to and if they are not already members, ask them to join Mayors of Peace. In speaking to your mayor, it might be useful to explain that the abolition of nuclear weapons is the will of the overwhelming majority of nations and people in the world. In this connection, let me speak now briefly about the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. This is the only multilateral treaty that requires nuclear weapon states to work towards the abolition of nuclear weapons. In fact, the total elimination of nuclear weapons is one of the main objectives of this treaty. The treaty has been signed and ratified by 190 countries. The total number of UN members is 192, so 190 represents the overwhelming majority. The number of countries that have signed nuclear free zone treaties is 113 countries and regions. This alone is the majority. Every year, the Japanese government submits a resolution to the UN General Assembly regarding the ultimate elimination of nuclear weapons. This year, during the first uh, committee of the UNGA, the resolution was supported by 170 countries. In the final UNGA vote this December, the largest number of member states ever are expected to vote in favor of this resolution. I might add that the United States, uh, which opposed uh, this resolution, explicitly opposed resolution, um, this year became one of the sponsoring countries. So that again shows another rapid change that's uh, occurring in the world. President Obama, in addition, has stated his intention to pursue the goal of a world without nuclear weapons and has thus given great hope to the world. In my peace declaration this year, I used the term Obama majority, a term I initially used in my speech at the NPT PrepCom in New York this May. I use this term to express the fact that the overwhelming majority of the world supports his goal. At the same time, we recognize that President Obama cannot eliminate nuclear weapons alone, which means that uh, citizens and citizens, cities have to work even harder to help him. We must mobilize the international majority to create a world free of nuclear weapons. Mayors of Peace held our seventh general conference in Nagasaki for four days from August 7th 
to August 10th this year just for this purpose. 134 cities from 33 countries participated in this conference where we discussed and adopted our action plan. Above all, we reaffirm our commitment to work together toward the abolition of nuclear weapons and lasting world peace. Finally, I would like to let you know how we plan to celebrate our new nuclear weapon free world in 2020. Based on the Hiroshima Nagasaki protocol I mentioned earlier, the abolition of nuclear weapon by 2020 is technically and physically feasible. Mayor Tawe of Nagasaki and I have uh, wondered together about the best way to celebrate this tremendous achievement. And one idea we like a great deal is to hold the Olympic Games in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Of course, there are many hurdles we must clear and for that purpose, we have just launched a joint feasibility study committee to explore the possibility of a serious bid for the 2020 Olympic Games. Support for holding the 2020 Olympic Games in Hiroshima and Nagasaki is spreading like wildfire. We are receiving enthusiastic, even passionate voices of support and encouragement from mayors and citizens around the world. I hope all of you will support this plan and that you will do everything in your power to make our dual dream of nuclear abolition and the 2020 Olympics come true. I assure you that Hiroshima and Nagasaki will be doing everything we can. And finally, let me conclude my remarks by quoting from the last portion of this year's uh, peace declaration. We have the power we have the responsibility. Together, we can eliminate nuclear weapons by 2020. Yes, we can. Thank you very much.